The overthrow of the dictatorial regimes can be produced as a consequence of four main causes. Firstly, because the regime had accomplished already the function necessities that had led to its establishment. Secondly, because it had lost the legitimacy or the support it had in its origins. Thirdly, because of external pressures that forced the regime to put on a democratic appearance. Or also because the existing conflicts within the government bloc lead to one of the fractions to appeal for the support of external groups. This last caused the importance of the role played by the public manifestation of disagreements among governmental groups, according to experts, is the most common one of the overthrown of dictatorial regimes. After the death of Franco, as the political parties were forbidden, a series of associations are going to be created with the goal of fixing the structure and the ideology of the regime. Some of these associations were the neophalangists Círculos Doctrinales José Antonio, Frente de Estudiantes Sindicalistas, Falange Española de las Jones, and the neofrancoists Fuerza Nueva and Confederación Nacional de Combatientes. Fuerza Nueva appeared for the first time in 1966, Known as a party, but as an editorial, and from 1967, as a weekly magazine where the principles Dios, Patria y Justicia reflected an idea of the traditional values for the Spanish identity. With these basic principles, an association was created at first, and then, in 1976, a political party that became one of the most important parties of the right wing during the transition. Right after Franco died, the powerful extreme right quickly mobilized to pay tribute to the caudillo and to influence as much as possible so they could manage to hold the transition process and still have great power in the next Spanish stage. These right personalities, who were politicians, business people, church members, army officers, etc., so called the bunker, defended the values imposed by the Francoist side after the civil war and justified the rejection to the new state by saying democracy would be a negative choice for the country. One of the main representatives was Blas Piñar, leader of Fuerza Nueva, who during Franco's regime was Procurador en Cortes and National Conciliar of the Movimiento Nacional. As the transition process went forward successfully, the extreme right-wing political programs were broadly modified. Therefore, their contribution to the political paradigm consisted just on a destructive criticism and no new proposals. Only two parties developed projects to achieve a new image and strategy. On the one hand, Falange Española Auténtica de las Jones, which wanted to eliminate the link between Falange and Francoism and pleaded for the Syndical Republic. On the other hand, Fuerza Joven, the youth section of Fuerza Nueva, wanted the distinction of a parliamentary group and a more activist extra-parliamentary group that could act in a more autonomic way without risking the party's image. Both projects finally disappeared due to the internal fragmentation and the lack of positive collaboration from the citizenship. During the 1977 elections, the bunker decided to create the Frente de la Juventud. Some of the young militants who were part from this association took part in terrorist attacks like the Matanza de Atocha on January 24, 1977. With this strategy, the Red Parties wanted to force a situation where the intervention of the army would be mandatory and, this way, the values of authority and order would be imposed again. After the election results, where the Alianza Nacional del 18 de Julio coalition achieved no parliamentary representation, the only way out was a military coup d'etat, which took place the 23rd February 1981 and was a fail. In 1982, after having achieved to place Blas Piñar in the parliament, Fuerza Nueva celebrated the anniversary of the 20th November and proclaimed the dissolution of the party. The extreme right wing during the dictatorship was not forced to acquire an aggressive active speech due to its position well placed in the power and controlling the forces of order. The position, repressed and operating in hiding, was not a direct threat to the regime, at least until the last year of the dictatorship. However, Franco's death changed the context radically. During the beginning of the Spanish transition, the strength right wing force were concentrated in a coalition called Alianza Nacional 18 de Julio, integrated by Fuerza Nueva, led by Blas Piñar, and Falange Española de las Jones, headed by Raimundo Fernández Cuesta. His more radical stance was evident in terrorist groups as Guerrilleros de Cristo Rey or the Grupos Armados Españoles, 
Also, some media of the regime as El Alcázar took care of promoting this movement. New liberalizing currents oriented towards the establishment of democracy in Spain and especially the resounding failure of the pro-Franco parties in the election of 1977 forced the straight right to acquire a much more radical and aggressive speech. However, the street right wing needed to recover the support loss in the polls. Remembrance and exalted invocation of the civil war became increasingly present, coming to consider it as a conflict that was not over. This would make Franquism hardly conceived as a system of order and social peace, as it had been repeated for more than three decades. For this purpose, they rescued all the slogans and propaganda and repeated the desestabilizing strategy used in the 1930s against the Spanish Second Republic, Generation. Therefore, this radicalization of the speech provoked the outbreak of numerous violent actions that hindered the peaceful progress of the transition. The most notable violent action was the Matanza de Atocha, committed in 1977 by a right-wing extremist group that killed five trade unionists and which marked the course of the transition. The totality of their action resulted in the murder of 66 people. As the society was turning its back to the neo-Francoism, a statement of a spokesman of the strange right-wing raised their tone as well as the accusation to the traitors of the anti-Spain. Once completed successfully the first stage of the transition, the parties of strength right wing were forced to renew their arguments and political strategy, not defending a regime but constructing an alternative. However, their program and their speech barely are refreshed and remain closely linked to the essence of the dictatorship, especially at the age of the crusade and the post-war years, which were the toughest of the Franco regime. This renewal of the speech achieved the opposite effect to that desire. While most of the Spanish sector of the right bet on Alianza Popular, the party of Manuel Fraga, the idea of the conspiracy was brewing like it happened in the Second Republic, culminating in the coup d'etat of 1981. As we have said previously, the neo phalangists opted to continue with an anti-democratic speech, especially in the early years. Therefore, the street right focused its efforts on encouraging a military coup which would put an end to the transition. Article, statement and speeches by the main representative of the Franquist bunker happened in the early months of the transition, always in order to attack the tenuous openness of the government program. They repeated the cry that led to the street, no queremos apertura, queremos mano dura. In them, it can be seen the aim of boycotting the government action and push President Arias to a blind alley that caused the arrival of a hardline military to the government. Tener la maniobra de hundir para siempre esa España una grande y libre por la que combatieron nuestros mejores. In the speeches that Blas Piñar pronounced in meetings in 1974, the same threatening tone against the progressive and traitors, the weakness to the government and an explicit rejection to the figure of Arias Navarro are found. In all his speeches, he called to the rebellion and to the Spanish unity so that the few support of the strength rate win in the democratic period would have greater impact in society and media. <laughs> At all times, the right wing appeals to the responsibility of Spaniards to defend Spain at its glory, comparing the current situation to the one Spain lived immediately before the outbreak of the civil war. Therefore, they use a speech with epic and heroic connotation that often resemble military speeches heard since the beginning of the Franco regime. Si José Antonio Primo de Rivera estuviese en esta tribuna, 
solo nos darían una consigna, unidad y entendimiento para impedir la disolución de España. This speech was maintained throughout the transition and with the settlement of democracy continued to appeal to the rebelliousness of the Spaniards and went on demonstrating its undemocratic nature. Mi voto, señor Calvo Sotelo, será negativo para su investigación. When talking about electoral propaganda and advertising, three stages can be distinguished during the last four of the 20th century. The first stage is the one during Francoism, until the death of the Caudillo, characterized by the absence of it or the secret broadcasting of very little propaganda. The second stage, after the 20th of November 1975, is the one of the advertising of the new political parties and institutional propaganda for the referendum on December 1976. During this time, the broadcast of pamphlets, stickers and posters was a massive phenomenon. During the general elections in 1977, the amount of propaganda shows the lack of democratic tradition in Spain. The political advertising was excessive since the quantity was more important than the quality, as well as the lack of orthodoxy in their communicative strategies. The political advertising must include a slogan. This element is a representation of leadership, experience, confidence, patriotism, and call for the vote. Similarly, the use of portraits in the posters showing a photo of the candidate was used. The photo may have been retouched to achieve a more attractive appearance of the candidate. However, during the transition, some parties' posters stay in the traditional aesthetic of drawing. Also, typography helped to transmit the political message. The biggest words used to be the ones with more communicative importance, and the font also contributes to the connotations of the message. On the other hand, the logo is a fundamental element for propaganda, since it helps the electors to visually identify the party. Moreover, a good logo is able to transmit a consistent idea of what the party wants to convey to the electors. Between January and June of 1977, the government proceeded to dismantle the Francoist institutions with 38 orders in council. It was in this moment of the reform when the extreme right terrorism started. The killing of five labor lawyers of the PCE on January 24, 1977 served to show the responsible actions of the communists, which later contributed to the legalization of the party. Therefore, the result of this action actually went against the extreme right principle. That same year, the Order in Council of the 18th March 1977 did not give advantage to any concrete ideology, but to the majority parties. However, it created representation mechanisms that favored government candidacies. The extreme right recommended voting Alianza Popular, led by Fraga, in those provinces in which they did not present a candidacy. Alianza Popular was characterized by the respect and remembering of Franco, so it was a conservative party, defender of a social market economy and a strong government with Catholic moral principles. However, these two extreme right-wing parties did not obtain any representation in the elections of June 15, 1977. Fuerza Nueva obtained 5,541 votes and Falange Española de las Jones obtained 25,017 votes. In those elections, more than 100 political parties had presented a candidacy and more than 18 million Spaniards, almost an 80% of the electorate, went to vote, for the first time since the elections of February 1936. At this moment, Spaniards voted for change, they did not want a regime similar to the one of Franco. On the contrary, they wanted democracy. In the elections of 1979, the extreme right achieves for the first and only time parliamentary representation with the coalition Union Nacional. They get one seat in parliament, the one of Blas Piñal. One noticeable aspect is that all national parties increase their votes, with the exception of Alianza Popular, which now presents its list of candidates under the name of Coalición Democrática. However, although they were a minority, they had some support. 
After one of Blas Pinar's meetings, an old woman expresses her feelings about Franco's regime and the transition, showing the main ideas of this extreme right-wing party's principle. Franco encontró una España destruida, deshecha, llena de piojos, llena de cadáveres, saqueada miserablemente por el comunismo y la masonería, y nos dejó una España maravillosa, una España arriba, una patria limpia, llena de alegría, y nos lo han destruido, nos lo han dejado llena de terrorismo, de miseria, de anarquía. Nos están destrozando todo. Defendemos España, defendemos nuestro caudillo, que sacrificó su vida por la patria y murió en una invitación miserable de la seguridad social. Y ellos cómo viven, cómo están, nuestro caudillo cómo vivía, y ellos en palacios. Ahí está Carrero Blanco en una casa corriente y vulgar. Y estos señores dónde viven, en el palacio de la Moncloa, con un gasto enorme. Nos están arruinando miserablemente. ¡Arriba España! The defense of Nazism is prohibited in other countries such as France or Germany. There are very strict laws against it and it is considered a crime. However, in Spain, neither the apology of Nazism nor of Francoism are prohibited, even though experts ask the government for it to be forbidden. On July 18, 2012, the Palacio de Congresos accommodated a reception in honor to Franco and the praise to the military uprising. The event was organized by Grupo USA and was chaired by Maria del Carmen Franco y Polo, daughter of the dictator. This act was not prohibited. However, on November 20, 2012, the homage that was scheduled was cancelled, not by the government but by the private enterprise that was in charge of the catering, which was again Grupo USA. The discourses of the extreme right wing continued to be very aggressive. An example of this hard discourse is the front page that La Gaceta published after Carrillo's death. The extreme right also draws attention to themselves through the internet in a more anonymous way which allows them to have an even more aggressive speech. For instance, this can be seen in Twitter, where many extreme right wing users express their joy and opinions after Carrillo's death. If the number of followers is observed, it can be appreciated that this group is a minority. As it has been analyzed, the ideas of the extreme right wing have not changed through time, but have become more radical when they have found themselves without supports. Therefore, they have always maintained the same principles, whereas the Spanish context has evolved. This conclusion is what Iñaki Gabilondo is going to illustrate in the following interview. Y hay un sector de, de España, de, de la derecha más derecha, por ejemplo, que tiene resueltos todos los problemas que nosotros no tenemos. Sabe exactamente qué es España, sabe exactamente qué no es España, sabe exactamente todo. Y aunque pase el tiempo, y pase el tiempo, y pase el tiempo, nada altera su convicción de cómo es España, cómo es la vida, cómo es el matrimonio, cómo es la familia. Yo he cumplido 70 años y en ese tiempo he notado cómo ha ido cambiando todo, a la vida, a la sociedad, a mis propios puntos de vista sobre las cosas. Y claro, cuando miro para allá me encuentro siempre a todos en el mismo sitio, diciendo lo mismo, pero bueno, tú no notas todo esto que ha cambiado, pero tú no notas cómo ha cambiado eh, las relaciones, los amores, las familias, los afectos, los dineros, la educación, y tú sigues a notar en el mismo sitio, tú no tienes ninguna duda, ¿eh? que no son más que una minoría, pero es una minoría verdaderamente, verdaderamente infatigable, ¿eh? y además es que, es que cuando ya parece que ha acabado, pues... Pasan 20 años y me parece, ay, es como si España tuviera un misterioso yacimiento de caspa, no sé dónde, o que, que de cuando en cuando vuelva a reaparecer. Pero creo que sí. Es verdad, parece. No sé, pero cuando parece que ya no está. Pero parece que nunca se fueron, supongo. No se pueden empaquetar en ningún territorio ideológico, decimos la derecha, la izquierda, no, está en otro sitio, está en otro sitio. Lo malo es que la derecha no les ha, no les ha expulsado, no les ha considerado su herejía. ¿no? Y eso hace mucho daño. ¿no? Vencimos y venceremos. Tenemos fe en Dios. Somos católicos, apostólicos romanos. Sabemos que tenemos que pasar este baño de sangre, pero el sagrado corazón de Jesús nos ayudará.